Cerecita Blanco de Arte Sister and today we're reading Saturn Astro Marduk and we're at the start of chapter 3 chapter 3 Canon and Leo on the first day of my journey I awoke early I got breakfast and wore my first leather armor it was the same armor that my stepfather wore when he began his training it consisted of a light leather armor vest, some short leather pants, a pair of iron wristbands, and some extremely light leather boots. I was surprised that such a big man had once been as small as me. When I went to the Hall of Mirrors, my stepfather intercepted me. After I opened the gate, after I opened the gate, my stepfather threw me in his arm. While carrying me, he started walking around the Crystal Palace. Ah, though it's a good day to be alive, my voice is there, still dancing and humming. Something good happened? I asked, I asked with my usual stutter. I'm going to be a father. I'm going to be a father. Your mother's going to have my baby. My baby, he said true. This bit of news did not humor me in the least. Forcing a smile, I said, Yeah, you're going to be a daddy. This made him stop his cheer for that. So he placed me back on the floor and he looked sternly at me. Boy, I always consider you my flesh and blood. There's no need for you to be jealous of your baby brother or sister. I'm not jealous, I responded. Toxic boy, toxic, toxic boys, I was. It will save us a lot of time, and plus it sounds nicer. I am not jealous, I just have a bad feeling about the new kid. I sent back to him. Keep your bad feelings to yourself. Your mother's already unstable as she is. Uh, uh. Oh, the air is weird, huh? Now that she is with Shao, she will need utter serenity for the baby's sake. He rebuked sternly. Fine, I'll be good. I responded, lowering my head in resignation. This made the big man feel sorry for me. Oh, yeah, it's my face center? Yes. Hugging me against his heart, he said, My dog, you're a very good boy, and always have been, and always will be. Thanks. Let's go see that crazy mother of yours, he said, opening the mirror door that led to the bedrooms. When I saw my mother, she was in her nightgown sitting before the mirror. Her black hair flowed over her bare shoulder. She was singing a lullaby while stroking her belly. When we entered, she stopped her singing. She looked at our reflection in the mirror and she smiled. She opened her eyes and my stepfather placed me gently in her lap. In a melodious voice, she said, Oh, my dog, you are going to have a baby brother. I will call him Leo. Isn't that a great name for your baby brother? Hearing her call me by my name for the first time made my skin crawl. Feeling me tremble, she said, My boy, you're trembling. Set up me a deer and start the fire. When he lighted the fire, I noticed that his reflection in the mirror was glaring at me. As for mother, she started chatting about all the plans she had for Leo's future. She wanted to groom Leo to be the perfect gentleman. The more I heard her plans, the less I liked the idea of Leo coming into this world. My stepfather too worried about her unrealistic expectations for Leo. He would never survive in this world without learning how to fight. Naturally, he kept this forethought to himself. After this conversation, I left my mother's bedroom. My father walked me out toward the hall of, uh, out toward the hall of mirror. Before opening the door for me, he, he stopped. He seemed about to say something, but in the last minute he changed his mind, and then he opened the door before me and said melancholically, I'm going to miss you, boy. The way he said this made me shiver. I headed out and took my place with the other trainees. They all wore the same leather armor. Most of the trainees were my age, however a good portion of them were a bit older. I noticed that among the kids there was a guy that had beaten me up earlier. Their leader, a boy named Roy, recognized me. He walked over there to where I stood. In a melancholy way, he said, Sorry, my duke, I was just following an order. Mostly I want to apologize for Canon. I see he got carried away when he bashed your head against the floor. Rubbing my bandaged head, I said, Yeah, no harm done. We're still cool, said Roy. Yeah, said I as I kept on walking. How's Alyssa? I asked. She's still a bit shaken by the Holy Spirit, but she's fine, he responded. Suddenly he, suddenly he kicked my balls and I doubled over in pain. Roy laughing said, now we're even. While I struggled to get up, I saw a dwarf entering the scene. He wore a black steel armor without a helmet. Strapped to his fat waist was a long whip. His head was as bald and his face was clean shaven. He was one of the elders. I think his name was, I think his name was C.B. 
Since, since he was small, he trained his body in the Bicerca tradition. Once his body was in stuck physical condition, he... Oh, yeah. Unlike Sip, unlike Sip, in my, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. His head was a spot and his face was clean shaven. He was one of the elders. Like CP, he became a pet dwarf for a noble family. Unlike CP, Mafuke became a jester against his will. This made him really angry. And since he was small, he drained his body in the Bicerca tradition. And once he was strong enough, he killed his captors and then he joined Bertha May's army. Masuke went to the horse stable and he brought out four lovely black steeds. He petted their mates and he fed them sugar cubes. Once they were come, he tied the horses to a massive carriage. The wheel had swords sticking out. Seeing these swords made me go. I looked at Roy and I asked, so what are we going to do for our first lesson? Roy gave an evil smile and then he said, we're going to be running for our lives. As soon as he said, then Mafuka, riding the chariot, started chasing after the Dranese. The new students started running away all together in one direction like uh, like cattle. However, the older students ran down in other directions. All the while, Mafuke was yelling and whipping them. From time to time, one would trip and be trampled beneath the horses. Others would be sliced by the blade. While I ran, I saw that a girl next to me had tripped. Noticing that she was about to fall, I held her catch her balance. Without giving me a word of sense, she pushed me behind towards the carriage. Since I was further behind, I felt the whip strike my arm. Thinking much on the fooling nature of this rat race made my blood boil. Whenever everyone, while everyone fled, I stood and faced the raging horses. Much to my focus chagrin, the horses would spook when they saw me. They stopped in their meat rack and they started yelping in a much hideous fashion. The sudden stuff caused my focus to fly off his seat. He didn't manage to land on a horse like a cat. The horses started backing away from me, and when Mafuke saw this, he took a step back. The other trainee did, did the same while staring at me. When the shock of the moment passed, Mafuke ran towards me. He grabbed me by the arm and he yelled, What the? What, what do you do, you freak? Did you hit my steers? Feeling the great tightening, I had said, yelling in pain, Animals don't like me. They're always afraid of me. Seeing that I spoke the truth made him release me. I could feel his tiny brain thinking of a new skin. The fact that the animal feared me complicated complicated his training methodology. While he thought he made us clean up the, the wounded. The, while the dead were buried right in the spot they had fallen. The wounded were taken back to the barracks in the camera window of the palace. Of the palace. I was... I... I ate it in the green I was eating the green task by the five kids who had beaten me up. Roy was ner was pretty nervous and he kept saying, This is too unusual. Kind of stared back at me with his pale blue eyes. His short black hair was wet with sweat. Stanley he said, Why do I have the feeling that the new kid has gotten all of us killed? We said nothing after hearing Kano's remark. While we cleaned up, Mafuke took the horses back to the stable. After thinking much, he came up with a new sinister idea. He took us to the weapon rack. He had the twenty shoes weapons ranging from daggers to claymores. When I was about to get a weapon, he grabbed me by the arm again. Smiling, he said, a friend like you doesn't need a weapon to fight. Now go stand at the other side of the training ground. Once Itaro was out of earshot, he said to the other student, I know some of you have never wielded a sword in your life, and since I am feeling very benevolent, I will make this easier for you. The first person to land a blow on my door gets to go to lunch early. And as an added and third sentence, the person will never have to get chased by the chariot. You guys have it, you know, to strike him down. Are you out of time? Hey, it's six more minutes, so. He then said to the guards at the door, Lock all the doors, we don't want a little rabbit escaping. I could not decide if I was angry at my fucker or at the students who were going along with his blood sick plan. I had seen now the, the students started chasing me with their swords, spears and daggers, maces and claymore. The other students took an indirect approach. Instead of wasting their energy chasing after him, they took to shooting at me with their bows and arrows. After the first arrow grazed my shoulder, I realized that I was doomed if I ran the younger kids. Instead, running ahead would give them a clear shot. Instead of running, I passed between the less experienced kids. And all the while, a rain of shots flew overhead. The stupid novices were so bent on killing me that they did not notice that they were dropping like flies. A few did catch on this path, and fearing to anger my Mafuka, they simply ran a lot slower than the others. I spent two hours running for my life, and by the start of the third hour, I was really thirsty. I started
started running towards the fountain and when I got close, I saw that my fucker was bearing, barring my path. Whenever I got close to the water, he would whip me away. Out of the blue, and I was praying my fucker here. And this made him drop the wave into the fountain. In a fury, he went towards the older kids, asking who was the dead man who shot him with an arrow. None of the older kids knew who drew the arrow. Their obliviousness made him re even angrier. He started punching the first kid he managed to put his hands on. Unfortunately for my fucker, the first kid he managed to grab was Roy. Was Roy's twin Rolo, and seeing his other half in danger, made Roy, Roy jump into action. Forgetting that Masuke was his superior, Roy shot an arrow straight at Masuke's bald head. Bald head. The arrow did not go too deep into his ball, into his skull. It seemed to Roy that Masuke's skull was made of iron. And when he saw that, that Roy had shot an arrow at him, he went to beat him up instead. This aversion allowed me to get some water. Once inside the elaborate fountain, I decided to use its large structure to my advantage. I climbed towards the highest part of the fountain and hid inside the swirling statues of the goddess of wind and the goddess of the stars. The other kids tried to climb after me, however, the irregular shapes of the statue of and the water drip and kept them from getting very far. By noon, my foot had rage and the other students had worn out. Seeing other kids huddle around the fountain made him ask, What the hell are you mad at doing? One of them said timidly, We're trying to kill my dude, but he hid inside the fountain. We cannot reach him. Forget about it, you're all out of time. Everyone clean up. Once you're done, go to the barracks and get some grub. After saying this, my fucker left the group. Once he was gone, Kano climbed, climbed the fountain. He found me hiding inside a cold pool of water. Reaching out, he said, The coast is clear. Congrats on surviving the first half of the day. Together with the other with the other students, I helped bury the dead. I did not get the logic behind this brutal training. Since he hardened it, I realized that this was done to harden us in the face of death. Many of the other shooters buried their friends while sobbing. After the first half after the first half day of the training we had we had two hundred and sixteen dead, sixty seven seriously injured and forty one mortally wounded. Only a only a hundred and nineteen remained more or less in one piece. After the gruesome task was done, we made our way into the barracks. The time broke? Two minutes. The barracks was in the camera side of the palace. The main entrance was steam after a lion. It had a large look about it. It was Within it there was the forge of the palace. The heat produced by the by the forge heated the water of the huge bathhouse that lay beyond. A lady dressed in white directed us to our shared shower. The boys bathed on one wing and the girls on the other. Once we were clean as a whistle, we joined the other students on the lunch hall. Hall. Being an open buffet, the older the older kids got first dips on the base food. Luckily, Roy and his crew sent me something decent to eat. That day we bonded over lunch. Seeing me, seeing me down in the dust, Roy asked, Why so gloomy? That's a stupid question. Wouldn't you be depressed if the entire class tried to kill you? Said Roy. He had a purple eye and a swollen cheek from the blows he had received earlier. Mother's having a new baby, I said gloomily. When my mom had my sister, she forgot all about me, said Ivy. Her hair was black and cut short. Her manliness made me confuse her with a boy the first time I saw her. So what now? So what, you, so what are you going to do now? As the, as the right-headed demon. His black eyes shimmered with the light as he bit down on a chicken leg. Taking another bite of my grub, I said, nothing. Whatever, man. If you can't do nothing, then why whine about it? Reason Ivy. Alright, we'll continue with this chapter later. Bye-bye.